Good afternoon, guys and dolls. How are you? It's wee Paddy from across the shock. Now, I've got a really uh, intense video for you today. You've seen by the title, something like Battle of the, the Two Knives or Jack Wolf Knives versus Pena, whichever one I choose. And what it is, is for me, I mean, it's all right coming on every month. And, and to be honest with you, it's not all right coming on every month. I come on every month now after about seven different iterations of Jack Wolf Knives. It's very difficult to keep saying, wow, that's fantastic. But it just is. And if it's not, I'll say it's not. It's just all right. But I haven't had a just all right yet. I genuinely haven't had a just all right. So I can't do any more than tell you what I see. And that's the same with any knife, whether I like it or not. I'll tell you the truth of what I think of it. I've got the Pena X series here. And this is the Apache, which is my favourite blade chip. Um, I hope Ben does a, a reverse tanto blade chip. There's a bit of a giveaway. This is a clip point. This is a gun stock. And this is the sharpshooter jack. And this was the, excuse me, the first knife Ben brought out in this new career for him as a knife designer. And they're both... Uh, Pena is a, a knife designer. He's, he's a, a designer and a custom maker who's been around for years and so well respected in the community. I love his knives. Just can't afford too many of them, but I wanted to get this one so that I have a comparison after a few Jack Wolf knives just to see where they stand in the market. These are both OEM made. This one's Riat. We're not sure on this one. Um, not Riat though, but you know we're not sure where it's made. So I'm just going to get straight into it. And the opening thing that I'm going to say is about the first impressions when you get these knives. Now, I'm not bringing boxes and tubes. It's just too much. Pena comes in a very sophisticated, lovely, stylish box. Absolutely beautiful. It really is. It's nicely presented. There's not a damn thing wrong with it whatsoever. The first thing you'll notice about a Jack Wolf knife is it comes in a, an aluminium tube. It has art on the front of it, which is amazing. Um, you get a leather sheath with it. You get a pog with it. You get a huge cloth with it, um, microfiber cloth. So, you know, that first impressions you get off a knife, I, I get more of a first impression on Ben's Jack Wolf knives, without a doubt. They're exciting, and I'm collecting all the tins. Uh, and they ju I just think they're, they're really, really lovely. It makes the experience a happy one from the start. But there's nothing wrong. What I'm saying is there's nothing wrong with a penny box. It's lovely. Very, I mean, the box means nothing to me. Boxes just end up in the bin. If I'm going to keep the knife, I end up binning the boxes, which I know I shouldn't, but I do. But the artwork that comes with these is collectible because they're all going to be different. Right, 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 forever, as long as Ben's making them. So the first impression is the impression on the box and strangely enough, the, the the box the the Jack Wolf knives is a much nicer, fresher, new approach to you know packaging. I loved it, but when you open the box, and the important thing about it is, you open the box, you empty the tube, you're looking at a knife in front of you, and both these knives made me go wow. Both these knives got me shaking because I was so excited to get both of them. I'm no less excited to get this than I was this because I've always wanted a penny, but this was the driving point that made me sell something to get this. And not sell it, but trade it. And uh, I'm so glad I did. So they both made me go, wow, let's, you know, I'm, I'm going to slightly give the, the first impressions towards Jack Wolf Knives. It was a more visual excitement there was more things to see and it's like it, it was like unwrapping uh, so many different layers of packaging whereas this was just very good packaging put down there you go so i think the jack with knives just edged it for me so the materials that they're both made of this is shredded carbon fiber and this is dark matter blue this has got blue through it you can see you can see little bits probably better on the other side of some bigger bits of the blue. But there is little light bits. And whenever you turn the light, you'll see different bits. Um, I like this more than this, but is it a huge difference? No, it makes no difference to the knife. But visually, I like this better than this. 
and um, this has got like the full bolster these are inset pieces this has got an integral um bolsters and handle you can see this titanium comes down goes right along up the other side it's all one piece and then you have the layer of your um carbon fiber set into it so you have a bolster and then end cap this is just full so you've got them just inset into the titanium uh, because i'm a traditional traditional knife guy and these are not traditional knives they're this is a modern interpretation of traditional this to me is just a modern slip joint although it has the full bolster it's a modern slip joint. So, so they're not exactly the same but they're as close as i'm ever going to get in my collection so be that be that as you may i mean i like this traditional look rather than the modern just mine but there's not that much in it and it's not i wouldn't take marks away from it because i'm buying this knowing what it is and this comes and i know what it is so it's just a difference that appeals to me more. Um, the difference that separates them as far as um, slip joint knives goes, this is an interpretation of a, a gun stock. You can see that shape, the gun stock. This is the butt of the gun stock coming up to the, the, the barrel. And this is just a modern straight handle. You know, this is like a, something like a brush handle. You know, it, it's just ergonomic. It is just a very simple straight handle that anybody's going to be able to grab it and comfortable there's nothing to detract from your comfort if you like whereas this has obviously the shape of a gun stock which i'll have to say i'll come back to that in a wee minute the blades this is m390 and this is a full hollow grind this is k390 and this is a high saber uh hollow ground I'll just get these out now and I'll show you and we'll have a look at the, the gun stock on this. I know I've done reviews on this, but this is a little, a little battle. So you can see the gun stock shape there. Beautiful gun stock shape. And the nice thing about this compared to a gun stock that you get in the traditional world is a lot of gun stocks will have a pen blade as well, which to me just detracts from a look. To get a single bladed one is amazing. This is one of the most comfortable knives you put in your hand. Two fingers up the front, two fingers up the I have a large hand. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful fit in hand. Really, really outstanding. Then, this is the Pena. Beautiful. Really nice. Just a, just a plain, simple design. When it goes in your hand, the lovely rounded over edges in this. It is just so comfortable in hand. This blade shape, you know the 940 is my favourite um, locking knife, but this is just something in that sort of realm. So I love it. Slight belly. Uh, it's curving nearly all the way. This has got a nice long bit of straight and a sharp belly to a pointed tip. So they've both got tips that are not directly in line, but they're still beautiful tips for poking anything you want to poke. The hollow ground on the Jack Wolf's knives, it's a, it's a higher hollow ground and it's thinner behind the edge than the Pena. The Pena, I, when I measured it there, was about 16 thousandths behind the edge. This was about 11 thousandths. So it's quite a difference in the thinness of the blade. This is a slicing machine. This is fairly good, but it is not as good as that one as far as slicing goes but is that all you ever want on a knife absolutely not i don't do a lot of slicing um in my daily you know, i slice boxes up but they'll both cut the boxes up without a problem with them edges and with them blade materials this is the better blade steel the k390 than the m390 but again for my use, I'm not a heavy user knife, but it is nice having these steels. It's nice to see what they're like. You don't have to sharpen them as much. You'll get longer out of them. You're not worrying if you're going to run out of steam. You know that you've got good blades to it. But I will never in my, well, I probably never get to test which one of these two lasts longer. Because you're going to be cutting different things. And I'm not going to sit for two hours and do that. I just don't feel the need to. The blade steels are fantastic. They'll last me as long as I'll ever need them. So I, there's not as big a fight over, although I do, you know, K390. Although this is not stainless, whereas the M390 is stainless. Yeah, it doesn't really matter to me. I like patina, so that doesn't matter. Um, 
I actually like the fact that Ben and Jack Wolf Knives are taking on these old traditional knives, making them a little bit different. And this is a, a coffin end to them. So he's doing different things. The chamfer in it is lovely. The one thing you'll notice, or I noticed straight away when I put these two together, this is very sharp. And by sharp, I don't mean it cuts. I've said this before. It's just so exact. The corners, the angles, everything about it, they're sharp. But they're not uncomfortable. Everything about this one is very much homogenized now. Everybody wants their big rounded over. And I do like that as well because it's very comfortable to hold. But this is sharp. But yet when you put it in hand, you melt into it. There is no, because of these cutaways, the little chamfer details at the back of them, it just fits beautifully. Every bit as comfortable as this. Although in your fingers, this probably feels more comfortable. But I've had no trouble in longer use with this one. So that's something that, you know, if that's something that's big in your, your hit list, probably the, the pen you would, would stand out there because it is very, very, but in saying that, you know, it is just a, you know, a broom handle shape. You know, it is curved, slightly domed, if you like. Very, very comfortable hand. Can't fault it whatsoever. This, on the other hand, is sharp. It's slightly domed. Yeah, it is slightly domed. Again, much about the same as this in the domed fashion. Although it's not actually, this one's rocking an awful lot more. But they both rock. Anyway, that's not as important to me because they're both slip joints. These are something I'm going to pull out, cut something, put them away again. The next, the titanium. The titanium in this is like a bead blasted titanium. It's darker, much darker than the, the normal. I don't know how they do that. No idea whatsoever. This is the, the a much greyer titanium. Very smooth. This has got a texture. Now, I have noticed after use, well, you can see here, after use, it's starting to smooth off. Um, now, I don't know whether over time that would detract from it. It definitely wouldn't me because I like to see that the knife's being used and not just sitting in a drawer. This one, you'll get more of the, let me just see if I can get you, you can see down here, they're probably where I hold it with my ring. There's little marks down here, snail trails, if you like to call them. Again, I'll not bother if I get snail trails on them. That would never do it. To me, looking down at these knives, the blade is gorgeous. But I'm just, the Jack Wolf, just for the fact that it's something different in a modern knife. You know, I want more people to get in the slip joints. And a lot of the modern knife lovers just stick solely to modern knives, locking knives titanium, you know, carbon fibre. This is bringing this the slip joint into the, their realm. And I'm hoping you're going to buy them and enjoy them as slip joints because you don't need a lock and knife. There's the truth of it. I mean, our forefathers, when they had them, they didn't, you know, it's just, it's not something that's a need. Yes, a lot of people find the safety aspect of it, but I have honestly cut myself more on locking knives, especially fidget knives because you get careless. So, because you're mucking about with a knife. A knife shouldn't really be mucked about with. You wouldn't sit and swing your gun around your hand now, um, loaded or anything, would you? So that's the answer. That's my answer to that. I am a strange man. Um, the fit and finish. Sorry, no, what are we going to do? The blades. Yeah, I've touched on the blades. They both got, I can't fault the blades. They've both got lovely swedges. Their nail nicks are deep enough Although, nicely with this, this is a full fat grind. It makes it a bit easier to pinch open. This is not hard to pinch open. That lovely swedge on it. They have, you know, they're, they've they both got the uh, grind lines. Can you see the grind lines in them? Absolutely beautiful. Both are beautiful. I think the fact that this is just fatter makes gives it a bit more beauty. Do you know what I mean? But that's not a... Um, the pen you marks on the blade... And the blade steel is on the other side. Jack Wolf is just on there. And M390 on the other side. So um, I would prefer Pena to put this up here. Like the Jack Wolf knife. Because it just keeps your blade completely clear. And just beautiful to look at. So the handles. Uh, carbon fibre. Yes I prefer this. But it's a deal. it wouldn't even be close to a deal breaker. But it is prettier in my eyes. Because it's got something different. The 
screws and all are very well done, very crisp. I've taken the I don't take I've taken one of the knives apart, taken the handles off to rip dye them, and they they work perfectly. Very sharp, very precise. I actually think the Pena, the bottom two screws in this seem to be a bit deeper than these. These two are about the same, but these these two don't seem to be as deep as the um Pena ones. But that's again very little is going to bother me at all in that. Um, and the overall fit and finish, look, they are absolutely fantastic. I can find no fault with either two that's worth talking about. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a nitpicky person. These are as perfect as a knife's going to come to me. I have custom knives the same price as this. And these are obviously... Well, they're better because they're so precise. But having a custom one and a custom one having little blemishes wouldn't bother me either. It wouldn't bother as long as I'm getting the design and the just everything about the knife matters. That wouldn't be something that would detract me from buying a knife. Um, so the overall fit and finish, I just can't fault it. I mean, they are just beautifully done. Um, and when you look at them from any angle. The fit and finish is stunning. Really, really stunning. Let's just get that up there so you can look up them. Just so well made and not that much difference between the blade thickness or whatever. Nothing at all to separate them that way. The, 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 where they need to be sharp corners and sharp edges, they are. You can see the Jack Wolf has a another extra wee bevel here, but it doesn't have the roundness that the, the Riat has, the Riat made um, Pena. So the here's the only way that I can truly give you something that is a difference between the two of them. And I'm going to let you hear the difference. So I'm not going to talk now and I'm just going to open them both twice and let you just hear the difference in them. Lovely. Really nice. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. The Jack Wolf. To me, <laughs> that there's a world of difference. This sound resonates just beautifully. It is so solid in every position. Um, I just love the sound of Jack Wolf's knives and they seem to be getting better as they come out. This newest one is just fantastic. So what's going to be my favourite? This is my friend. This is Penny, who I respect gratefully. I'm going to leave it up to you. You decide what matters to you in a knife. I think these knife, they're, they're priced about the same price. They weigh about the same. This is 25 just over 2.5 ounces. This is just over 2.6 ounces. So, I mean, there's nothing in them. Their blade length, the cutting edge, is both just over 2.5 inches. The You know, the length of them is 2 and 3 quarters. Sorry, 3 and 3 quarters, uh, the blade handle. So, yes, they are exactly the same nearly in every way. It really is what, you know, what sticks out to you, what stands out to you. Um, there's different blade shapes in this as well. So the shape of the blade probably isn't the thing, but they're so close. And that is the most powerful thing about that, that Pena has been making for years. And I, he designs this and he gives it to, to um, Rayat and they make it. This Ben designs. And he does it from scratch, whereas Penny maybe does build knives around them or before them to get a look at them. Ben is doing this from his head on the bit of paper, on the CAD. Then it goes to the company, to uh, the OEM, to produce it. So they're two really talented men. Um, one's more a knife maker, one's more a designer. Um, but I respect the both of them. I respect these two knives. I think they're awesome. And if you haven't got into slip joints, and this is high end, but you want to step in at the high end market because of all the 
the benefits you get for longevity and getting the blade steel you want, the cover materials you like, you're not going to get them so much in a, you know, a GEC. They do bone natural materials. Now, I believe we might be getting natural materials later on in the process of these, which would be lovely. Um, it can, for me, it can't be the jig bone. Uh, so I'm hoping forward to Ben has got some beautiful carbon fibers, matte carbon fibers, dark matter, just fantastic range. Uh, I don't think these come in any other colors. Although, sorry, they, they come in my carta, as do these. But I picked these because they were the same-ish color, and that's what I wanted. I There's so little between them. To say you're going to separate the two of them by the sound of the, the walk and talk would be a bit... A, a bit of an easy way out for me, but just fit and finish. The, the, this is it. The fact that Ben, this was his first iteration, coming up against something like Pena, who has such experience, and especially with high-end OEMs and all, Ben had a search for his. He had one and then let him down, and he had to search for another one. To get these knives out now, and I've had seven in a row, and I'm sure Pena's had many, many more, all fantastically made fit and finish. I put this at least on level par with the Pena. At least on level par. The little things that make it special to me, the special to me, is the, the patterns and the the walk and talk, which is such a hard thing to get on a pocket knife. It really is. It's not an easy task. These are not easier to make than uh, locking knives. These are actually so difficult to get right. Uh, and I think both these gentlemen have got them right. Um, some ways more than others you decide let me know down below please if you can just take a wee bit of time out of your day and write down which one you fancy the best uh or if you like me grateful i've got to <laughs> anyway i'm gonna go now please like and subscribe youtube's playing funny buggers with uh, subs at the minute um i would appreciate you rejoining if they've took you off or just joining if you're new to the the youtube community if you like this sort of stuff i'll have plenty more of it budget as well as high end. Take care. Paddy's away. Have a good day.